he said that his colleagues at EPA and at the National Toxicology Program had been feeding phthalates to pregnant mice, rats, Mm -hmm. rodents. Mm -hmm. And what they found was that the male offspring developed in a way that was not completely masculinized, not completely what you'd see in a genetic male who was not exposed. Okay. Okay? Okay. And this, they've studied this over and over and over again until they were really sure that they could do this repeatedly and which chemicals could do this. And then they published. And what they published was that when the mother, let's say rat, was exposed to a phthalate, let's just say, I'm going to give you a name, diethylhexyl phthalate, D-E-H-P, just so I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, That's probably the most, the worst actor in this class (laughs) for lowering testosterone. Um, When the mother was exposed to that in early pregnancy, then her male offspring developed smaller penises, smaller scrotum, testes were less likely to descend, and there were internal changes as well, changes to the vas deferens, and and so epididymis, and so on. Um, And this distance that they'd been measuring for years, but which I and no other epidemiologists had not heard about, the distance from the anus to the genitals became shorter. Mm. And they called it the phthalate syndrome. So this is the first syndrome that was named after a chemical that wow. a woman is exposed to in pregnancy. So and that this, means these pre- guys in Japan were the first ones to study it. Sorry, well, the the gentleman in Japan, uh, your colleague, the chemist. He was the he he's, he was not a Japanese. He was an American. He okay. was at CDC. He's oh, an American. Oh, he was at CDC. And he 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 studied the chemistry. But the people who saw this and discovered this in rodents were Earl Gray and Paul Foster at the EPA and National Toxicology Program, okay? So they showed the phthalate syndrome, and then I thought about this, and I thought, well, what about us? Right. What about humans? John says we're all exposed to it, so what, do we see this in humans? So that became my next big project Mm. of unraveling this mystery, right? Mm-hmm. By the way, in the I'll tell you a couple of other, other things about rats. What Earl Grey said, AGD is forever. So if you have a small AGD, Anal sometimes, called, distance, sometimes distance. called the taint or the gooch or yes. the grundle. <laughs> Very familiar with the gooch. <laughs> yeah, the three terms are better known than the technical scientific terms. Mm-hmm. But when, um, you know, th- that distance is is shorter... Um, when the mother has been exposed in this critical window, three days, three days, if the exposure is during days 18 to 21, they found that out later exactly, Mm -hmm. then they'd get this whole syndrome. After 18 to 20 days after conception? Yes. Okay. Gestational day 18 to 21. Okay. And... The analog in humans is not as specific. We don't know exactly what it is, but we know it's the first trimester. We know it's the early first trimester. Right. Okay. So I wanted to see, how do I look at this? Mm-hmm. So he, they had rats. They fed the rats, the phthalates. We can't do that. We can't feed pregnant women phthalates. Right. Right? No. That would be unethical. <laughs> That'd be unethical. Highly unethical. But remember the study for future families? The yes. first one? Yep. Okay, you remember I told you that we saved the woman's urine? Mm. How lucky was that? Right. Now we, now now we, we can go could, back. We can go back, get those samples, <clears throat> test them, and see how much phthalate is in their urine wow. when they were pregnant. So that was just really fortuitous. And all my graduate students, I say, if you can collect urine, it's cheap, mm-hmm. it's easy to store, and it's going to turn out to be useful. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Right. So we had this urine, we sent it to John Brock and others at the CDC, and we said, tell us how many, th- you know, which phthalates are in these women and how much. Mm-hmm. And there was a gradient. Okay. They all had it, but some had a little and some had a lot. And, and then we, what are we going to do with that? We want to 
then relate it to the offspring genitals, right? Yes. So we had to get the kids of all of these people, all these, all these people wow. to come in. And that was no easy task, wow. but we got many of them. We didn't get them all, but we got many of them. How many roughly? Oh, I, gosh. Off the top of your head, you don't have to be exact. Yeah, we could look it up, but it's it was in the hundred, you know, it was like several hundred. Okay. I, yeah. Um, By the way, what is this graph, Stephen? This is uh, the common phthalates, ah. phthalates in America. So, for instance, over here, the green one is what, what she was talking about, the DEHP. Right. Yes. And that's okay in canada okay oh that's interesting there's yeah. no dehp on the east coast of the u.s no that maybe they didn't sample there okay you know, but the, they have that big graph there it says mep so uh, the, there's a bunch of red like in the yeah. new york area yeah and I, then mbp wow and what is that little zoo okay that's like okay that's that's uh like the eastern europe or the western europe yeah there's a lot of uh, green. I, I actually don't believe there's anywhere there's no DEHP. Look at look at that giant spike right on like what is that Iran or Saudi Arabia? That giant one? Mm. Of ME it's mostly MEP which is red and the MDEHP. So MEP uh monoethyl phthalate is in personal care products, fragrance, skincare products, oh, makeup. Wow. That, that's very nail polish nail polish right okay yeah MEP is a big player there um, it's not actually one of the worst actors in terms of being anti-androgenic mm -hmm. but um, but the DEHP is is DHP the worst DEHP is the worst and then dibutyl phthalate DBP and BZP benzyl butyl phthalate mm -hmm. and now what's interesting there are new ones we can talk about that process oh, afterwards wow. the new ones that are bad too okay. coming out and being put in the market so where were we yeah where were we so okay. we i wanted to figure out so john and others at cdc got the samples right, of the women. and did the measurements and you got right? the children and we got the children mm -hmm. and then the question is how do you what do you look at in the children so it wasn't obvious what an agd was in a child we knew what it wasn't a rat okay but what it, what how does he, how do you make that translation so it took a while, a couple of pilot studies, to actually figure out how to replicate the rat exam, if you will, yeah. to a, an infant exam. I worked with pediatricians and, to develop this and set this up so we could do it reliably and repeatedly and consistently, get the same thing every time, which mm -hmm. you need for science. And, and once we figured out what that exam was going to be, we brought the babies in and if the mothers agreed, measured this syndrome markers of the right. syndrome in these children, right? Right. Okay, so we found it. We found the phthalate syndrome in humans. This means that the mothers with the higher levels of the anti-androgenic phthalates, particularly those three that I told you, were more likely to have a child with these symptoms and most markedly shorter gooch mm. <laughs> yeah okay right right and of course i didn't use that in the publication but <laughs> short, shorter <A> -G -G. <laughs> and um that paper also made a huge impact it made a huge impact scientifically and lots of other people started measuring HED, and also made an impact in terms of um politics or actually public health because phthalates were then investigated mm. and included who investigated them the consumer protection act okay a, a, a consumer protection whatever committee that, committee yes thank you and um and i testified there and and they heard that and when they write their report they recommended that phthalates be taken out of children's products mm. and and they were in the Consumer Protection Act of 2008. Okay. So the paper came out in 2005 and we had this legislation. Now, I have to say they were a little off the mark because the products that they banned these phthalates from were children's products. That's too late. That's 
You get an A. Yeah. Yes. That's First time ever. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. It's a really should have been worrying about what the mother was exposed mm-hmm. to. 